great second coach, good to welcome. And I'm glad that you are here today. And I will lead off with the Anthony Casey. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to be here today as we celebrate the anniversary of the birth of a great and glorious nation that is just off the coast of the United States. We give you thanks for its culture, its people, and the blood is infused upon this great nation of ours. What I'm most thankful for, above all, is that in this time of strife, and trial, and tribulation, two nations can come together celebrating the anniversary of the birth of one, and there are nearly the rocks thrown, shots fired, and people yelling. We give you thanks for that peaceful coexistence. We give you thanks for the breath and the love that you have shown the great nation of the Bahamas. Amen. May you join me in congratulating the Bahamas on 41 years of independence and um, wishing its people well as we journey towards another. Thank you very much for coming. Right Reverend Colonel Moss, Bishop of Guyana and Mr. Moss, Post Pastor Reverend Keith Johnson, other members of the clergy, Mr. Simon Buckman of Council, at the Bahamas Council here in New York, and uh, Mr. Blackburn and our hard working staff members. Uh, Senator, State Senator Bill Perkins. I don't know if he's here. Yes. Okay. okay, yes. State Senator Bill Perkins from New York State Senate District 30. State Senator Parker. New York State Senate District 21. My esteemed colleagues from Mount Carrick Council of Court. A number of them are here for the representatives. I'd like to understand those of you who are here, so you can recognize it. We have Trinidad here, and uh, I guess that's all. Um, executive members of Bahamian American Association Incorporated, executive members of Bahamian American Cultural Society, Dr. Valencia Carol Moet, distinguished invited guests, fellow Bahamians, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's truly an honor and a privilege for me to bring welcome remarks of this very special service of Thanksgiving and commemorating the Bahamas' 41st anniversary of independence. It really seems just like yesterday that we were all gathered to celebrate our beloved country's 40th birthday and last year's theme suggested the journey continues and so it does. Ladies and gentlemen, the year 2014 has been declared by the Right Honorable Prime Minister to come over the Bahamas the year of culture. And in keeping with this proclamation, this year's independence theme, celebrating our culture, a commitment to peace, compels us as Bahamians to remember and reflect on our history in order to find the inspiration that we need to make our journey even greater in the years ahead. We can only achieve greatness by instilling in our future generations the right attitudes towards life, love, work, family, and God. And to ensure that their values are consistent with what is necessary for our Bahamas to prosper as a peaceful nation. Ladies and gentlemen, although our future generations live in a seemingly different world than ours, 
And even though their vision in planning their lives and building their own society will be new, all that they believe and achieve should be built on the very basis which fortified our forefathers. And that is a foundation built on God, family, and country. Today, as we write a new chapter in our country's history books, mindful of the struggles and challenges we face as a nation, let us remember that even in the worst of times, we have demonstrated, the Hamians have demonstrated their resilience and strength as a people and withstood the test of time. It is therefore fitting that as we ready ourselves for the exciting events and activities in our country from today, we come to worship and recognize God is our head, who has taken us through our trials and is guiding us into the trials that lie ahead for the islands of the Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, as the Indians throughout the world celebrate this year of culture, we should find a renewed respect for the heritage that has shaped us as a people and created our country's brand as a favorite destination for millions of people from all walks of life. This will ensure that our future is safeguarded and that we continue to focus on our values. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, and verse 15, it states, If you are called to free birth, only do not turn freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. As I write to the scripture, I would like for Bahamians throughout the diaspora, here and everywhere else in the world, to remember the words of the father of our nation, the late Sir Lyndon Oscar Pinnell, who said, Freedom does indeed have a price. It is not free. Freedom means responsibility to properly look after our families and ourselves. Each of us has a sacred duty, he said, to love and protect this blessed land that God has given to us, to build it up and make it better for future generations. All of us, Solomon said, have a stake in being to him. My fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, as we observe and give thanks to the Almighty God for allowing us to celebrate 41 years of independence. Let us go forward, upward, and onward together in love and unity. I'd like to conclude by reciting the words from our national pledge, which says, I pledge my allegiance to the flag and to the commonwealth of the Bahamas for which it stands, one people united in love and service. My fellow Bahamians, it is at this moment that we should reflect and remember why we are one nation, one Bahamian, united under one God. I wish God's richest blessing on each of you gathered here, and I would like to wish our people everywhere a very happy independence. Welcome, welcome, welcome. May God bless the United States of America and may He continue to bless and prosper the Commonwealth of our Thank you very much.
resist what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to our conduct, but to bad. Do you wish to have no fear of the authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive its approval. For it is God's servant for your good. But if you do what is wrong, you should be afraid. For the authority does not bear the sword in vain. It is the servant of God to execute wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also because of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants. Busy with this very thing. Pay to all what is due to them. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Revenue to whom revenue is due. Respect to whom respect is due. Honor to whom honor is due. Owe no one anything, except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling law. This is the word of God.
invite first of all to thank the rector of this parish for the warm words of welcome extended to both Carol and I. I'm also grateful to the Council General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, His Excellency Mr. Forrester Carroll and his dear wife Mrs. Carroll for their kind invitation to address you this afternoon on this special occasion. They are friends of mine going many years back and I'm very proud of the representation they are offering in this country on behalf of all the Hamians. I wish them well and I assure them of my prayers and best wishes. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord our strength and our Redeemer. The 41st anniversary of the independence of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas was celebrated on Thursday of last week, the 10th of July. Today we have assembled in this church to continue that celebration. And as we do, I invite you to reflect with me on the topic, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, remaining strong among the nations of the world. The claim to strength and greatness among the nations of the earth is viewed from various perspectives. History has shown us great nations did not just come out of nowhere. In many instances, charismatic and visionary leaders mustered the forces to bring about change so that new nations, new communities, new opportunities, and a new people would be born. God has blessed us throughout history by giving civilization great men and women who have blazed trails for our generations and who have made us the beneficiaries of their hard work. Whether we are religious or political leaders, civic leaders or just ordinary folk, in every age, we must be concerned about our legacy. Legacy, not in the sense that we want to be singled out for our beliefs, and not so that people will honor and recognize us, but legacy because we are entrusted with the responsibility of making the world in which we live a better place for ourselves, our contemporaries, and for generations yet unborn. I'm reminded of the Negro spiritual which states, if I can help somebody as I pass this way, then my living would not be in vain. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas became a sovereign nation of their 41 years ago. With the mix comes what is good and what is bad. The global explosion of mass communication, the internet and television are reminders that the ways and lifestyles of the world are within our reach and our view. Patriotism is about love for our country, citizenship, and the preservation of our rights as sons and daughters of our nation. Therefore, it is imperative that we handle the sacred issue of citizenship seriously, never making it a cheap commodity. Patriotism is about enjoying what it means to be Bahamian, not allowing the negative things which are realities 
to define who we are. A true Bahamian is one who has been born of the Bahamas, obviously, or who has been adopted as a citizen. One who loves the country, respects its institutions and the conventions, and remains uncompromisingly, uncompromisingly loyal to its constitution. Being a true behavior means respecting our national symbols, proudly pronouncing the pledge of allegiance, and standing at attention during the singing of our national anthem. Being Bahamian does not mean mediocrity. It means that we are constantly striving to attain our very best. The best that God desires us all to be. It is about contributing to the national development and by making our contribution on the international stage as well. Being a true Bahamian is about being decent and a law-abiding citizen. Patriotism is about defending our sovereignty, no matter how small we are as a nation, with courage, no matter the cost. Patriotism is about managing the environment, in such a way that it is preserved for generations yet to come. But there is a second step that we must make in this process of enabling our nation to remain strong. It is the strengthening of our educational system. The verb to educate comes from the Latin educo which means to lead out. Education leads the person out of emotional, psychological, social, and economic imprisonment and mental stagnation. While in our contemporary world, the measure of education is taken by academic success, degrees, and other credentials, this could be quite misleading. Through education, an individual is empowered to develop the potential God has planted in each of us. Education is about equipping a person with the necessary tools, not only to survive, but to enjoy a high quality of life. Education is power. And those who are truly educated have learned how to live with themselves and with others. And because of the importance of education in the Bahamas and elsewhere, we must ensure that disputes among the educational partners, educators, parents, and unionists are minimal so that our children in particular are not disadvantaged or prevented from receiving a quality, sound education. For the strengthening of the nation, Bahamians must see the acquisition of a sound education as a matter of priority. This means that educators must be provided with the tools they need to do their work. Suitable remuneration and an environment conducive to good teaching. We must hold educators to doing such a thing so that they can bring the very best out of those whom they are responsible for. The government then, as the custodian of the nation's resources, is obligated to create the environment where teachers can teach and students can learn and they can do so effectively. Many of us remain hopeful 
that in this 40, in this 41st year of our independence, we will see the full establishment of the University of the Bahamas in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. To ensure that the University of the Bahamas is fully accredited and delivers quality education of the highest standard, the process must embrace the expertise and creativity of persons who understand the process of education and who possess the courage to model the university to best suit the context from which it is to operate. Many of the renowned universities of the world sprang from the communities in which they were born and they address the needs of the people in their locale. For this to happen in the Bahamas, persons free from partisan politics, insular prejudices, and outright pettiness should be eliminated from the process. Finally, if we are to remain strong as a nation among the nations of the world, we must always be conscious of the fact that there is a God. And that God calls us time and time again to return to Him. There is a passage in the Divine Scripture which says, It is the fool who says in his heart, There is no God. Another passage says, What will it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? What can a man do in exchange for his life? The scriptures tell us, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and happy the people he has chosen to be his inheritance. This is what made us great. We want are a nation which acknowledges the sovereignty of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah says that all of us, like lost sheep, have gone astray. It is now time to return to God. To retain our greatness as a nation, God says that my people who are called by my name, humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked way, that I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. As a nation, we are guaranteed greatness when there is national repentance. A national return to God means that we will Recommit ourselves and our resources to make the Commonwealth of the Bahamas one nation for one people united under one God. I am the Lord your God. I have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You must have no other gods but me. As long as we remember this faith, as long as we live by this, irrespective of whatever nation you may have come from. Your nation and the Commonwealth of the Bahamas will remain great among the nations of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the ministers of the ministries of the Bahamas government, the members of the House of Assembly and Senate, members of the judiciary, and members of the boards. May they be guided by your spirit in the exercise of truth, justice, and compassion for all.
the opportunity to give you all the time on this one. And so with this opportunity, I wanted to make a presentation of a proclamation. I cut my speech in half. <laughs> Please accept my gratitude and thanks to all of you. 
and to everyone, we thank you so much for your presence and we look forward to seeing you next year at the second anniversary. Thank you.
quality of life that is deserving of every single individual who has been made in your image and likeness. We pray for the trouble spots in the world, and we pray for the brokenness in family life and all of the address with which we sometimes live in our various communities. Father, grant that we will have the courage to join our hands and our hearts and our voices with all men and women of goodwill who truly desire to work until the kingdoms of this world become of the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And may the peace of God that surpass all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing